In this tutorial, we are going to explore the Flood Fill tool in Affinity Photo, which allows us to quickly fill areas with color. The Flood tool, aka the Paint Bucket tool, can be enabled from the toolbar and is represented by a Paint Bucket icon. We can also use the keyboard shortcut G. Keep in mind that the keyboard shortcut toggles between the Gradient tool and the Flood Fill tool, so make sure you have the correct tool enabled. Another thing to keep in mind is that the Flood Fill tool only works with pixel layers. As I have an image layer selected, notice how the Flood Fill tool does nothing. We can either rasterize this image to a pixel layer, or we can add a new pixel layer on top of our document, which will allow us to work non-destructively. After I select a color to fill, I can click on the canvas to fill an area. In this case, it filled the whole canvas with the color we selected, which might feel strange. However, when we look at the options of the Flood Fill tool on the top context toolbar, we can see that the source is set to current layer. The source option tells the tool where to look for pixels to fill. It is now set to current layer, meaning it will use the active layer to determine how to fill an area. As the current layer was empty, it filled the whole canvas. Let me press Command or Ctrl Z to undo this and set the source to current layer and below. This time the flood fill will use the current layer and all the layers below to determine which area needs to be filled with the selected color. Let's click again on an area to fill. And it filled the whole canvas again. This brings us to the second important option, the tolerance. The tolerance controls how picky the fill will be when you click. A low tolerance value means only pixels very similar to the one you clicked will be filled and a high tolerance value lets the fill spread to more varied colors. Because of the high tolerance value, the whole canvas was filled. Let's undo that again and lower the tolerance value to around 15%. Now when I click on this dark area, it fills up that area. However, as you notice, it actually filled every color in the document with the tolerance. Maybe this was not what you expected. You might have expected that the fill was going to be confined to the selected area. This brings us to the next option, the continuous checkbox. Continuous is like stay in the lines toggle. When turned on, the fill only spreads to the connected pixels, perfect for coloring closed shapes. When it's turned off, as in our case, it will fill every matching pixel with the tolerance. I'll undo the last action and turn on the continuous checkbox. When I click on the same area again, it now fills the click area only. Pretty cool. Now there's one other checkbox in the tool setting called anti-alias. When this is turned on, the edges of the fill will be blended with the surrounded pixels for a soft natural transition. This works great for photos where hard edges would look unnatural. However, if you're working with pixel art or drawn images you want to fill, you probably would turn this off so that the created fill has sharp, pixel perfect edges with no blending. The final option is the blend mode drop down. By default, this is set to normal, and this means that the fill color simply replaces pixel colors in the filled area. You can change this to a different blend mode, but I would suggest to keep using normal and then change the blend mode of the pixel layer you're working on. This way you can change the blend mode of the created fill anytime. One quick tip while using the flood fill is instead of clicking to fill an area with the selected tolerance, you can click and hold the mouse button. When we now move the mouse, we can adjust the tolerance, which allows us more control on what we want to fill. Pretty awesome. The flood fill tool also takes an active selection into consideration. If I make a quick selection and then use the flood fill tool, notice how the fill is restricted within the bounds of the selection which is pretty cool as it gives more control on the area you want to fill. By the way, the flood fill tool also works on masks. To demonstrate, I'll add a fill layer on top of the layers tag and use the spare channel I created earlier to create the mask. When we alt or option click, we can actually see the mask. To use the flood fill, we need to make sure the source is set to current layer. Now using the flood fill tool, we can quickly remove areas from the mask by filling black areas with white. Ok, one option I didn't explain in the flood fill tool is the layers below option in the source drop down. 
This acts a bit like the current layer and below setting, with as difference that the current layer pixels are ignored and only pixels from the layers below are used to determine the fill area. Let me quickly brush something on the current pixel layer and then use the flood fill tool with layers below. Notice how the current layer is ignored. Personally, I don't use the flood fill tool that much, as most of the time I use the flood select tool and use the fill with primary or secondary color shortcuts. However, the flood select tool does not have the current layer and below option, so the flood select with the fill will not be able to completely replace the flood fill tool. And if you have a line art you want to quickly fill, just like this cute fox I have drawn on my iPad, the flood fill tool works much faster as you can fill areas just with one click. Pretty nice. I hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. See you in the next video.